Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be building the uh, small pitched roof in the middle. Um, now I've gone back and forward with the design of this, I don't even know how many times. Originally it was designed to have a reciprocal roof with a full height uh, car lift and really high walls. And then I didn't like the really high walls, so I decided to put this frame in the middle to give me more height and keep the wall height much lower. And then I decided to have a full height lift uh, to lift a car full height into that frame. Um, and I've done quite a bit of drawings around that at the moment. So I've been messing around with all different uh, roof pitches and everything. I came up with something I was happy with. I was going to do a 45 degree pitch, double windows with shingles on them. Um, laid that out yesterday, put two timbers up and it was just way too big. It was like this, it just looked like this huge, ridiculous, separate thing on top of the rest of the building. Um, it didn't look like that when I sort of modelled it and stuff and just can't allow it, it just doesn't look right for me, can't do it. So I've changed the pitch, I'm going to 20 degrees, which means I can't lift the van to full height anymore. But it does mean I can use a small lift which is removable, so it makes the, the lifting of a vehicle aspect of the workshop much less intrusive, so it can be moved out of the way. Um, so it's a small lift, basically lifts to about 1500 millimetres, so you can get under it on a stall, uh, which is obviously significantly better than uh, being on your hands and knees or on your back. So you can sit on a stall still and work above you, and obviously get to all the wheels and suspension easily as well. So I think I'm going to go with that, it means I can have a much lower roof pitch, and uh, it's just going to look right, because that is actually very important to me. I'd uh, happily climb around a little bit and have a little bit of hassle in my life for the building to look nice. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing. 20 degree pitch, I'm just starting to make the first rafters and uh, put them up there and just hope it looks a bit better than last time. Right, so my uh, roof pitch is 20 degrees, um, which I've got up here. It's called a plum cut. You measure down there. I've got a measurement that worked out, it's 1526. Currently this measurement's not including the thickness of the ridge just to allow me a bit of tolerance until I get the first ones laid out. 1526. Copy that angle back there. And then bird's mouth is 40 millimetres. So we go like that to 40. There. Square off of that line. That's the back of the wall plate. Square off of that, 40 millimetres. We cut that out. We say this isn't uh, isn't going to be right initially. This is going to be laid out so that the two halves touch each other. So it's not going to include the ridge. Um, but I'm going to make sure they fit right, squeezed up against each other, then cut out for the ridge. Right, there we go. So the uh, calculations worked out just right. They join together currently, so I just cut 25mm off of each of these, plum cut, and then that will accommodate the ridge in the middle. And I think the pitch is much better, it's a lot less in, intrusive in the, in the building. Before it was up here, it just didn't look right. It's very shallow, it's not ideal for um, shingles, um, but they will be okay, this is the minimum they can be. So go with that.
Uh, well that, if you didn't figure it out already, is going to be the trimmer for the ridge. Um, so now I need to join those two together with another um, splice or scarf joint. So let's uh, do that now. So we're going to cut that off, all of that, all of that, and that. Right, let's cut that. Right, the uh, day is getting on a bit now. I'm just going to try and get one more set of rafters in just to support the ridge a bit better. And then I'll call it a day, and then tomorrow I'll get all these rafters done, I reckon. Okay, that was uh, not a bad day in the end. A bit slow start because I didn't really know what I was doing, to be honest. I don't really uh, that. Um, knowledgeable on pitch roof stuff so I watched a lot of YouTube videos and stuff but yeah I've got to set it all out it's all sitting nice and I've made another three you probably see in the background there another three sets of rafters uh, it's a nice evening loads of sun so I'm trying to use up some power uh, but we need the rest of the power now for the rest of the evening so I shall make the other sets of rafters tomorrow and I'll go through that in the video because I haven't shown that yet but I shall show you what I'm doing yeah, I reckon I should have it done tomorrow, but I've just looked at my bits of wood. I'm not sure I've got enough bits. I might just be able to get one more set out of some offcuts, but I might have to mill a bit more as well. Anyway, call it a day today. Hey everyone, so it's uh, next day. It's quite early. I'm uh, just waiting for some power to come in, really. Waiting for it to brighten up a bit. 
Uh, while I wait, I thought I'd go over some uh, co structural uh, considerations with this. Now, these big beams, obviously they're very big, but they're spanning a very big distance. Um, so they need support. Uh, they're always going to need support. And they have a join in them, which needs support. Um, it's also a low angle pitch now. <coughs> so as weight is applied to these, although there's not going to be a lot of weight on them, uh, as far as roofing is concerned, it's glass and um, some wooden shingles. Uh, if they had snow and wind on them, there could be considerable amount of weight on here um, because of the size of it. Um, and that weight on there, I mean, doesn't matter here, but in, in the middles is going to be trying to push these big timbers outwards. Because as, as the angle pushes down, it tries to spread these timbers outwards. Now, normally, you fix that in a roof by having something between the two or between the rafters to prevent that from going like that. But we have height considerations here. I don't want to lose the height. So the plan is, is to brace everything, this timber, from spreading outwards and from sagging in the middle off of other existing stuff that's hidden that's, that we can build into the roof. So I have all these big timbers, which are not going to go anywhere, you know, underneath. So the plan is to have bracing from these timbers up to here a slight slope and then there'll be turf obviously butted up against that which also adds a considerable amount of, uh, of uh, weight bearing uh, capability so yeah it will support them from moving downwards and outwards particularly in the middle because because of the long span there actually there is flex in them as you can see certainly way too much flex um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do with that, is uh, notched into these will be supports that come down here at a relatively shallow angle and then the roof will be built up against there and then that will uh, resist those forces outwards um, because obviously it will be tied to these rafters which are then tied to the walls and tied to the big piece of timber underneath them and then there will be the weight of the turf and everything on that as well and that will be considerably strong then and plus the um, ability of this beam to hold, which is a six inch wide beam. Um, so yeah, that's how I'm gonna contend with that. Uh, the uh, type of join I did, the scarf join, is not particularly good at resisting, uh, is it lateral? Yeah, um, loads. So uh, that's another reason why I have to do it. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do with that. So a quick look from underneath. Um, as you can see, so though if I put a brace in the middle of there, say three braces on that, which transfer that those forces onto those roof rafters. Um, that then is trying to push those roof rafters outwards, which obviously there's a wall there. They're tied into that big beam in the middle. And that big beam in the middle can't go outwards because they're tied to the rafters. And it's all um, opposing forces which counteract each other. And I'm uh, very confident that that is more than sufficient to bear the weight of this, uh, what is actually quite a small roof, even with snow and wind and everything else on it. A few people asked as well why I went with the uh, frame in the middle type design as opposed to uh, the original reciprocal design. Uh, one is for that height, um, but it could have been done with a reciprocal roof um, if I'd have gone high on the walls, which was another aspect. But one of the main factors why I went with that was because of the difficulty in getting timbers long enough. Um, some of those timbers would have had to have been over eight meters long, like the ones down here were, and it was a nightmare getting them. Um, they'd have to come on a lorry and everything, and uh, the ones I used didn't. I could just put them on a small trailer. Um, so that was the main reason really, is uh, timber length was able to be much shorter and easily movable without big lorries and things. Having that frame in the middle has added a considerable amount of work to the build. Um, but it has made for some uh, different content and some, um, some nice learning experiences with all the uh, proper roundwood timber framing with all the uh, wind bracing and everything.
Bird's mouths are looking lovely and tight. Yeah, please then. So if you uh, hadn't already guessed, then the larger uh, openings in the frame, they're for uh, four big windows. That's what's going in them. So yeah, tomorrow I'm going to put in these supports and things under here. And then the day after we'll start adding windows and button. Quick view from underneath. Looks pretty cool, right? I know the... Uh, Scaffold boards are in the way. I need to leave them there for now. Right, so that's what I'm going with. So that's uh, notched into there by about 15 20 mil, so that's not going anywhere. That'll be held in with one of these good quality uh, lag fixings, it'll be kept dry so it shouldn't degrade. And then down here, we're not in any kind of notch, so I'm going to use a big stainless steel fixing. I mean, that's not going anywhere, and that goes down into the rafter underneath. Um, and then the roofing will also come up against here and be shuttered off with some cladding that's then fixed so there'll be a lot of points more than just this this is going to be have weight bearing on it turf bearing on it and cladding and stuff that's all joined in everywhere else so i think that is going to be very very strong strong is what we want right got those all done and it's a really strong gun. There's no movement in it at all. It's just four bits of glass. A couple of hundred kilos of, uh, of roof shingles, that's it. Right. That's that all done. So uh, I'm out of materials now. I need to go and do some milling. So I need uh, bits to go on here to join this into the uh, turf roof. I need all stuff for fascias. I need some more roof button. And I need some stuff for the uh, window frames and holding the windows down and all that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go and mill up a log now. Right, I'm just trying to figure out the detailing of how this roof is gonna go together. Um, trying to keep windows watertight without, you know, loads of different stuff and plastic and sealants and window frames and all that kind of stuff so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick the windows down with the uh, glazing tape like i did on the greenhouse then have a piece on top like a glazing strip uh like a piece of batten like this but just tidier with uh, another type of tape on it as well and then that will stick down on there and have a step in it so that it screws down to that rafter and squeezes those tapes makes that window watertight that worked well for the greenhouse and then i have to put an additional piece of batten along this rafter under there to support the battening so then the battening will come along let's just move that over to imitate that a bit so the battening will come along and sit on that other piece and they'll be at the same height and then we'll have wooden roof shingles on top of all of that say like that 
with the other shingles. These aren't actually then, this is just off cuts of wood, but it gives you an idea. Um, and then, yeah, so they'll be sort of like that. should work and look quite tidy and be easy to do with stuff I've already got. I think we'll go with that. Butter and nail in them as well. Some of you must have might have noticed this. Don't know what happened, my string must have rolled off, moved, and I cut that in the wrong place. So I've had to pack that out, plane that off, smooth it off, get it right, and then that'll get cladded over. Be a bit annoying. But nothing I can do about it now, I'm not changing the rafter. Good morning everyone. So it's bright and early and it looks like it's gonna be a lovely day. Clear blue skies, which makes a nice change because it's been uh, very cloudy overcast and for a few weeks before that it was basically raining constantly, uh, which has been a struggle for power. I've been having to work around that as far as what I can do goes. Uh, so it'd be nice today to not have to worry about power and just be able to get all the things that need power inputs done. Uh, but yeah, seeing as it's going to be a sunny day, I better go and check the sheep have got water and do all that stuff first while the sun comes out. And yeah, take you along for the ride. Alright, let's see if the, uh, if the big tiger will come with us. <whistles> Here, puss! You come for a walk? <whistles> Here, puss! Come on! Good girl, good girl. You gonna go for a walk? You see your friends? Come on, keep up. Come on. Should we let the chickens out? Right, let's let you lot out. Ladies and gentlemen. No, just a few, is it? Alright. comes the roof rough. You alright ladies? Sorry I didn't bring any food, it's just water. Then get your hopes up. Oh they think I've got cake. Oh dear. Hey ladies, sorry I didn't bring you any cake. It's just water. You are cute though I have to say. Here comes the majestic tiger. Never far away. Come on. You're rolling some sheep's poo. Bit of a standoff. This is about as much action as we see around here. <laughs> oh, they're a joy, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Better choose your battles next time, girl. They ganged up on you, didn't they? If it was one on one, I reckon you'd have had them. I would have bet on you. If it was one on one.
Right, that's all four windows stuck down. So now we need to make all the uh, strips and everything which holds it all down. Um, and then another tape on top to seal it from the top. Right, so there we go, all finished. I reckon that turned out pretty well. It didn't cost very much, as always. Um, just a few logs and windows were spare from the greenhouse build and I didn't pay much for them anyway. The wind's just picked up, so I'm hoping it's not too loud on camera. Uh, so yeah, we're ready to go to the next part, which is a uh, breather membrane, button, and then, um, then we're gonna be putting those roof shingles on, which I'm really excited about. So that's gonna be in the next video with this although I've got some things planned before then so I've got to do some house maintenance and stuff uh, but yeah hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching